and my book is Networking for People Who Hate Networking, a field guide for introverts, the overwhelmed, and the underconnected. As an introvert, or someone who's overwhelmed, or someone who's underconnected, or an extrovert who still hates networking, you can do great by working with who you are rather than fighting against who you are and trying to network in a way that's guaranteed to make you crash and burn, hate networking, and think you're bad at it. So imagine you, for example, read a book that was about how to find a palm tree. And the book was written by someone who lives in Hawaii. And they say, just go outside, take a walk, and you'll find a palm tree. So that advice works great for someone who lives on Maui. If you live in Idaho and you buy this book and you really want to be good at finding palm trees and you're very earnest about learning the techniques and you go outside and you walk around day after day and you can't find a palm tree and you decide you're a failure at finding palm trees and you're terrible at it. That is the same frustration that people feel who read networking books that aren't bad books, they just aren't written for everybody. So this book is finally created for people that have a different personality style and to work with them to help them network beyond their wildest expectations. I've been a consultant for 15 years and speak to thousands of people annually and of all the different leadership topics that I cover, the concept of networking, particularly for people that classify themselves as bad networkers or people who hate networking, has really come to the top as the area that's been able to help people the most and that's changed their lives in the most positive ways. So this book teaches techniques, many of which are counterintuitive, about how to survive and even thrive in a networking event. For example, the first counterintuitive piece of advice is to arrive early. So if you hate an event, you think you'd want to get there as late as possible. However, it's much harder to segue yourself into a room full of crowded, talking people um, late in the game as opposed to entering a quiet room of three or four people and talking one-on-one -on -one to a couple of them. So that's one technique. Another is to volunteer at events because when you are volunteering, you have a purpose and it's something to do with the event. And introverts and people who tend to get overwhelmed don't like to have nothing to do. They like to have a purpose and a role. Another thing to do is to get in a line. That sounds crazy, who wants to stand in line? Lines are great places for introverts at networking events because it gives you, again, some, somewhere to stand, something to do, and a person in front of you and a person behind you. It's very concrete and an ending point. When you're finished whatever you got, what you're standing in line for, a drink or something to eat, you say goodbye, natural segue, exchange cards, you're on your way. So there's a lot of really specific, tangible suggestions in the book that people can put into practice right away. The big idea behind my book is that you have what it takes to be an amazing networker and you can achieve your big goal beyond your wildest expectations by using the techniques in this book, leveraging your strengths, rather than labeling certain personality traits you have that in the past may have been considered liabilities for networking, you can use those same personality traits to make you an off-the-chart networker.